you have collaborated with some really good doctors like Peter Mukalo or Asim Malhotra but there are uh, also some intelligent doctors on the other side uh, a very interesting doctor a hepatologist to be more liver liver doc yeah, yeah i knew you'd bring it up i had to bring this up <laughs> <laughs> okay because he's such an interesting guy i should add that he's quite intelligent and uh, i like a lot of the things that he says i'm sure you do too and i i find a lot of his things educational like when he says things like even a little bit of alcohol is bad for the liver i i agree with him a lot of the things that he says actually make complete sense but then when i saw him react to you it was so fucking immature for <laughs> a doctor of his intellect okay for like a grown ass man okay because all you did you were not you were really polite i saw that i read that entire thread like i wanted to like the first thing that i saw was his insults okay then i was like okay what did yohan do to provoke him so much let me read the original <laughs> thread then i went through your entire thread you were so polite you all you did was like put clinical studies you put meta analysis you used his own logic against him you used you were talking like you know like pranav radhakrishnan from science is dope you were you, you were being very rational because i think you knew how he would react i it. didn't want to leave him any scope that's yeah. that's the reason the thread was like that i was like i don't want to leave him any kind of give him any opportunity where he could just like come on to the thread and say oh you went engaged in this logical fallacy or blah, blah blah i didn't want to bring in any of my conspiracy stuff into it i was just like dude like this is what i do for a living man i'm i'm constantly sitting and researching the medical literature to help improve i thrive and the kind of treatments we offer to people like this is this is what i do man for a living this is where i get my salary from so uh, uh, it does come up as an attack on people who are actually trying to pursue credible science based medicine but from like uh, a, a bent where we only want natural things to be used whether it's herbs or vitamins or minerals or like just three words but then those categories encompass so many compounds within them that uh, plays such crucial roles in the body in terms of our biochemistry and uh, you know like nutrition is pretty much everything like it it, it does sound uh, egregious to say that but then all diseases take place when we have imbalances in our biochemistry which have to do with all of these different vitamins and minerals so if you just figure out how to you know get th- that on track and uh, figure out like okay what other natural compounds can help us to move our health in the right direction then you don't necessarily have to depend on allopathy so what we're trying to pioneer with functional medicine is exactly a way where we can really have a good handle on what's happening inside someone so i spent a lot of time really researching the diagnostic side of things like that's my expertise so you know gut microbiome testing genetic testing organic acids hormones blood work like just integrating all of that and uh, you know really cracking some like why someone's going through what they're going through and then you know the other end of the research is basically just uh, coming up with evidence based solutions like digging deep into the medical literature and you'll be surprised man like uh, the the common notion about the scientific literature is oh it's just mainly filled with studies about pharmaceutical drugs but that's far from the truth like if you if you genuinely take a good look at the scientific literature a uh, fuck ton of studies are there and you'll find repositories of websites which are dedicated to just archiving studies about natural compounds you know there's there's like a crazy ton of uh, evidence that i myself like get flabbergasted looking at every time like fuck i have so much to learn and so much to dig into so, so since i'm so steeped in that space like him coming out and whenever he says some whack shit on twitter that i'm like day day in day out either giving it to people biohacking it on myself or you know things like that then uh, i i know and he has a very big following so i i just like itch to like control that and i have to let it out somewhere so i i thought i'll do it in a way where you know like people watching it can also see that this guy is such a buffoon yeah. like I, all he had to do is either tell me the, the reasoning behind why my studies are wrong or maybe post higher studies from his end like maybe there were better studies uh, which factored you know, in like what, yeah something like that the best the, the, i i was expecting him to ignore you <laughs> i i i think that like from his perspective the best thing that he could have done is say okay i may, i think i might have made a mistake i'm just going to ignore him but this jackass went uh, you know uh, went ahead he doubled down he, that is like mistake he doubled down yeah. and it was so stupid calling asim malotra an anti science nazi and calling <laughs> malone an idiot see uh, like i i hear from people from his side asking the layman like myself to you know trust the experts to follow the science and that's what we try to do we 
we take their advice and follow scientists like asim malhotra like robert malone but now he's like no he's a nazi why because he's on the other side and then at the very end his own supporters his own followers were saying were pointing out to him look this is what johan did all he did was point evidence and you are attacking him personally that doesn't make sense to which he made this absurd you know this this is over over intellectualizing things he said well i don't want to uh, disprove him because of dunning kruger effect well if you are so uh, you know if you're so concerned about dunning kruger effect if you're so concerned that johan will get more attention then you could have just avoided him so, but he already gave me more attention by exactly, just addressing me right I mean, so exactly what, what like... a moron <laughs> No, but that that is not fun to do. I just wanted to see if he would. The thing, the thing with these kind of people, I'll I'll tell you what their problem is. They kind of assume the monopoly on uh, like science when it comes to health, especially like uh, all these people with big letters after their name who spend years in, you know, like training in some kind of branch of allopathic medicine, whether it's to become a liver expert or like a neurosurgeon or whatever. and they they come with this typical like shermer randy kind of uh, you know militant mindset when it comes to like preserving this narrative that uh, allopathy and pharmaceuticals are the only evidence based way to treat diseases and anything that is under that is all quackery so ayurveda and homeopathy like he will say are outright quackery and then when it comes to functional medicine the narrative is that oh it's it's a little bit more sophisticated form of quackery but it's still quackery you know that that's that's the kind of position they want to maintain even if you see like go do google search on uh, functional medicine you'll find these uh, like rational wiki and all all these like uh, militant atheist kind of blogs uh, science based medicine and like you know, i'm not, i'm no stranger to all of this cuz i've been looking into these kind of people and their mindsets like on my podcast also i recently uh, had this guy alex sekaris so i really recommend you to watch his podcast cuz uh, in his entire career like he's basically interviewed a lot of people in the frontier science areas and then he also has a dialogue with the skeptics so he's had exchanges with shermer and uh, not randy but he's had exchanges with christopher french as well and a lot of the so called like prominent skeptics in the west so it's it's mainly going through his work and then seeing the back and forth between the skeptics and the people who are trying to push the boundaries of science uh, uh, in areas that might seem woo or might seem like uh, you know uh, going into non material realms but at the same time have a, a like a good large amount of credible evidence supporting uh, you know like n- non material phenomena uh, if you just see the entire exchanges that have taken place and the articles on his website and all it it really helps to expose the mindset of these skeptics and the way they tend to behave i've seen it a lot of times cuz the skeptics have a lot of uh, things to say about conspiracies and about uh, you know like psychics and mediums and non human phenomena and aliens and all of that so i i find them like <laughs> it's like it's like a group of people that's dedicated to defending the mainstream narrative on everything like it's pretty much if i analyze them over the years it comes down to that and they have a common tactic of using the logical fallacies that they themselves rail against like if you if you listen to the arguments a lot like uh, what are the skeptics supposed to do right like they, the first thing they know is that ad hominem attacks are, are not an argument and this guy like just goes off on a crazy ad hominem spree not addressing my evidence at all not like the, the way to address it is okay this guy has come up and a proper skeptic knows that a background doesn't matter like a 3 year old child could say like point to a study and that could be true like whoever the fuck that guy is or what his background is has nothing to do with the argument he's presenting this is a common talking point you'll see from the skeptics themselves like about ad hominem attacks but then when you see how they behave when, when they're challenged on their bullshit and their quackery like it's exactly the same thing I you know mean, so he, the yeah he he broke so many uh, logical fallacies ad hominem appeal to authority uh, appeal to popularity and uh, like every uh, logical fallacy that he and his gang talks about he he contradicted that easily and i i really don't even get the thing man like i i put a picture from i actually stalked his twitter quite a bit so i was mm-hmm. trying to find a place where he would declare okay what is the kind of evidence that he would ex- expect mm-hmm. in order to change his mind on something yeah. and then it basically like came down to a picture uh, which i posted in the thread itself where he said that okay I, we need at least like rcts you know like human clinical trials or meta analysis in order to start thinking that okay some, something does have evidence and that's that's exactly what i posted like i had 
more like mechanistic studies and animal trials and all of that to post but i i intentionally didn't post any of that i was like dude this is what you said this is what you want yeah i'm giving you that now fucking change your mind you know like uh, act <laughs> act act like a good scientist and change your mind when you're confronted with shit that you've not researched enough and you know you land up making a fool of yourself and someone points it out to you but oh he doesn't happen to be a scientist or someone with four letters after the name so you can just dismiss him and your dumb dumb indian followers will just go along with you cuz like your followers don't know how to think either right that's the sad state of things where they are right now if if the same dialogue was happening in the west like just looking at the, the exchange and the thread i would have gained so many followers from his side but because people out here just don't know how to think man it's it's a very like sad state of affairs but that's sadly where things are and it's up to us to change that and move it in the right direction